everybody. I hope that you're having a fabulous start to your December. I'm starting a new series today on gifts to embrace forever. And we're going to look at the three gifts that was given to Jesus, that were given to Jesus at the manger. And we don't know if they were actually given to Jesus at the manger. In fact, most scholars believe the wise men came later. And we also think there may not have been three wise men. There was nothing to suggest there was a certain number of men in scripture at all. There were three gifts, however, and those three gifts were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So we're going to talk about how those gifts can be looked at with deeper meaning this Christmas season. How can we receive the fullness of the gifts that Christ brings us? at Christmas time. And the first gift we're going to focus on is actually the last one in line in scripture. And we're going to talk about how each of these gifts can correlate with the great gift that God brings us, renewing our love relationships with God, ourselves, and with others. That whole relationship and positioning with God remakes us in his image, allows us to be his children, to be in perfect relationship and dwell with him and dwell within him forever. The way that he originally had hoped for us when he created humankind. And Jesus comes into the world as his great gift of restoration, reconciliation, salvation. He remakes all things, makes all things new. And he allows us to be in perfect relationship with God the way God wants. So in perfect relationship with God, as his children and his co-heirs with Christ, we can be his image bearers and dwell within his heart and live from his heart. And out of that, we can look at these three gifts that we are able to receive, embrace, and share as part of who we are made new in Christ through the gifts of Christmas and, of course, Easter, when Jesus gave himself as a sacrifice, which is what I'm focusing on with myrrh. Myrrh symbolized the gift that you would give to someone as an embalming agent. It was a fragrant, anointing substance that was used by the ancients on dead bodies. And we know that Jesus came with the intention of sacrificing his life so that we can live with God forever. This is one of the greatest gifts of Christmas. And so I am giving you this as the first gift to mention. How can we bear the image of Christ and honor Christ this Christmas with the gift of myrrh, of becoming part of Christ and sharing the fragrance of of his sacrifice with others this season. There are a lot of ways that we can choose to share the gift of myrrh. We can choose to share that Christ-likeness of his heart by forgiving others. That doesn't mean justifying anything they've done because we don't have to justify things in order to forgive. In fact, that's kind of the opposite. Justification means you have nothing to forgive. So we're not justifying, we're not saying it was right, we are simply turning that over to God and trusting that God is the one who brings justice. So forgiveness, the way that Christ brought us forgiveness, is one of the greatest things that we can do to embrace that gift of Christmas, to embrace that salvation gift, to embrace the gift of grace. We set our hearts free by being a person who can forgive and let all of that go into the hands of God to be the one who brings justice and to trust him to be the one who brings justice in our lives. And by doing that, we are saying he is Lord for us. So that's why forgiveness is so important. We must let go of those things so that we're not harboring bitterness because that gets in the way of us really saying that we believe God is God. Um, if we're trying to try to get justice on our own and in our own hearts, we believe that we have to be bitter in order to, for everything to be set right. And, and that doesn't set anything right. It just makes us miserable. So God wants us to be set free and he brought us Jesus so that he can be the one to repair that relationship with God. And, and through him, he can equip us with the power of the Holy Spirit to forgive and to love in ways that we can't love. So it's not justice. It's not 
uh, justification and it certainly isn't reconciliation. If someone is dangerous to be in relationship with, you don't have to reconcile with them. You just simply need to let the resentment and bitterness in your heart go free so that you can be free and that you can trust God to be the one who is God. Another way that we can share the gift of myrrh and embrace that beautiful gift of sacrifice this Christmas is to spend time with other people. That's one of the greatest sacrifices. A lot of people talk about monetary giving, and that's certainly important. People are in need around us, but when you don't have any money, sometimes you feel left out. But the most precious thing you can give and the thing you really can't replace is your time. And that's what often people who are alone at Christmas time need the most. So share your time with people who are alone and share your time and your care and your compassion and your thoughts and your prayers with those who've experienced loss, even if it wasn't just a few weeks ago. Someone may have lost a loved one that was really close to them years ago, and it's still a painful thing. Show them that you acknowledge their pain and that you care about them. Don't ignore it or gloss over it. Tell them you're thinking about them, and that means a lot to those who are grieving, that you acknowledge that it's okay that they're grieving and that you care about them. Sometimes your greatest gift is also listening. Listening without the need to insert your own self-importance in that time of listening. And that means you need to really just listen to their heart, not just what they're saying. Sometimes people are venting, but hear that they are hurt. Hear that they are scared, even if they sound angry. Listen for those underlying emotions below anger, below venting, below the, the surface emotions that you might be hearing. Listen and tell them it sounds like you're feeling a little anxious about what's going on around you. Hear those underlying emotions and tell them you hear them. Listen without the need to always be heard. You don't have to offer, offer advice when you're truly listening. That means that you need to be heard and you need to be the one with the last word. You don't have to fix it for them. Sometimes listening is more important than fixing. So that is a sacrificial myrrh type gift to spend time with people to show them that you care and to listen without the need to be heard. Checking in on people that are alone, that live alone and making sure that they, they feel like they're important to other people around them. Um, making sure that you are sending letters to other people, people who are lonely. Um, those of you who have prison ministries or go to prisons and visit prisons, that is a beautiful gift of myrrh that you're offering. That's a self-sacrificing ministry for sure. So those people who are imprisoned, whether it's a physical prison or whether it is a prison of drug abuse, people that are in sex trafficking situations, looking for them and telling them that they matter instead of looking the other way. Those are other ways that we show the gift of myrrh, making sure that you show care for those who are poor or lonely or otherwise outcast is really showing the nature of Christ. And resisting the temptation to judge others. That is a big one. It's really hard, especially during the season, not to get judgmental when everything's harried and hectic and people aren't always on their best behavior, to resist that temptation that we all have to get judgmental in those places. It's very difficult. I struggle with it sometimes myself, but that would be a, a tremendous gift of myrrh where you can change the situation by showing grace. And grace is certainly a tremendous gift of myrrh that you can share this Christmas season. And sharing with the needy when you're at your volunteering is fantastic. Churches and charities really need your help. They have a lot of things going on, but also sharing with the needy when no one's looking and no one knows that you've shared. You don't have to tell everyone when you've given. So that is a wonderful way of sharing the gift of myrrh. If you sit with people who are hurting and weep with them and just be present with them without having to say anything, except I'm sorry. The worst things that we can do for those who are in pain is to sometimes just tell them, oh, everything's going to be just fine and kind of dismissive and give them platitudes and things that you minimize their pain. We don't want to say those kinds of things. Sometimes it's better to just say, I'm sorry, and maybe not say much of anything else at all. And that can be more of comfort that you care and you're validating how they feel as being important to you. So laying down your life 
without comparing your journey to others is also a gift of myrrh. Sometimes we look at our sacrifice compared to the sacrifices other people seem to be making or the progress or the ministries or the contributions that other people are doing and we get that comparison trap happening. Jesus never compared himself to other people. If you ever notice that, I wonder why. He never said that his sacrifice is better and yours is not. He, his sacrifice certainly was better, but he never engaged people in that comparison trap. In fact, when Peter was being restored, Peter started to get tempted into that. And he looked at John and said, well, what about him? When he was being restored right in the middle of that moment of forgiveness. And then Jesus sort of discouraged Peter from doing the, the comparison thing. And he discourages us from doing that too. Our path is our own. God only made one of you and he only made one of me. And it's very tempting to compare what we're doing with what other people are doing or accomplishing, especially when we can only see what's going on with them in the surface. So resist the urge to compare yourself with other people. Lay down your own sacrifice. Lay your life down before God and don't compare your offering to that of other people. We didn't see those who brought gifts to the um, baby Jesus or the young child Jesus, whatever that might have been looked like, and say, well, I brought gold. You know, you should just go home with your myrrh because those gifts were all important. They all signified roles of Christ. Even though gold may have seemed to be more important, it showed Jesus' kingship and his royalty. Frankincense was also important because it indicated his priestly role as our high priest before God. And myrrh was also important because it showed that Jesus would give his life as a sacrifice to cover our sins. So think about ways that you might reflect and share that fragrance of Christ's self-sacrificing love for others this Christmas. If you go to my blog and you make a comment and you share the blog about this, then I will enter you in a Christmas giveaway. I would love to give you a free copy of Beautiful Warrior, or if you already have one, a soap, a Beautiful Warrior themed soap. So I would love to be able to give you a gift this Christmas. And I hope that you have a wonderful and merry evening and that you are experiencing the loving fragrance of Christ's grace for yourself right now. Bye-bye.